This is how the fraudster does this. This is a cancelled bank stamp. He uses the same chemicals. Um, this is acid, alkali, makes the paper go blue or purple, and bleach, to bleach it back. Different types of bleach. If it's a million dollar check, he will, in, he will spend time on getting the right types of chemicals. <laughs> if you get the checks back from the bank, you can get the bank stamp off, you can put them through again. The only secure way to cancel a check is with holes. The word cancelled with holes through the check, then it cannot be used again. Now this is a secure check. A secure check has got a different type of paper. It's effectively soft paper. Any tampering of a secure check um, will reveal attempts to change it, reveal an attack. So if you scratch off the letters on a secure check, the ink has gone all the way through. It will be very difficult and it leaves a mark. If you start to erase, it won't just erase the ink, it will er erase the whole pattern. Acid instantly goes straight through. It's a little bit like toilet paper, it's a softer paper. Alkali and bleach, but it's too late. The check has stained. Can you see the stain on that secure check? And in fact, it's gone all the way through to the back, which is there. The check is stained. I just want to spend a second on... that's finished. The reason for having secure checks in your organisation is quite simple. If a fraudster attacks a check and the bank lets it go through the system and you can see marks on the check, you can see the attack on the check, the bank has been negligent. I know there's bankers amongst us uh, and part of the forensic science role is to, is to gather evidence to get your money back from the bank. If the bank lets a, a secure check through, the bank will fund the fraud. If you're taking risks with um, uh, standard checkbooks and, and uh, the old-fashioned uh, checks that are easy to change, perhaps it's more difficult for me to prove that the bank was negligent. Okay, that's my 35-40 minutes. It was a very, very brief overview. The only thing that I haven't done which is on your list is fraud hotlines, and I'll be very quick, which is anonymous and free. Uh, I've covered fraud hotlines now. <laughs> they have to be anonymous and they have to be free in an external reporting channel. Um, but it's very limited as to what I can do in half an hour. I do this uh, in the week after next. I'm doing a course for five days on fraud. Um, so uh, there's a lot of interesting material. It's a very interesting subject. I love doing it. Um, I like putting people in jail. <laughs> and it's been wonderful to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, we have with us, uh, there's been a slight change in schedules. Uh, Mr. Harun Wahid, who is, is our next speaker. Uh, he's the head of human resources at Unilever Pakistan. He's in a bit of a rush, so that's why um, we're going to have him first before our tea break. And Mr. Wahid has over 20 years of experience HR side, both within Pakistan and internationally. His passion is to build teams, train talent, and find talent, build leadership, essentially. Um, that's, that's what he does, and that's what he loves doing. Um, so I'm going to ask Mr. Harun Wahi to join us on stage. Thank you. Please welcome Mr. Harun. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be here uh, talking to the financial wizards, chartered accountants, numbers people, but I strongly believe my interaction of over 20 years with lots of chartered accountants within Unilever system, within and outside Pakistan, that they are very creative people. They do work on numbers, but they are as creative as, as marketers claim to be creative or they could be as creative as 
HR people at times claim to be creative, but somehow the tag, the limit that accountants, with due apologies to all of you, don't hit me please, you know, I'm a single soul. They put some lid on them that we are numbers people. I can assure you in the businesses, I strongly believe that the value creators are none but finance people. They are the ones actually who create value in the business. And I'm going to talk about, now my, my talk is because I strongly believe that talent management is the most critical and strategic driver for business growth. And in today's very dynamic, ever-changing business world, every business is facing one challenge, and that is talent management. So what I'm going to talk about is, I'm going to talk generally about talent management, and then I'm going to move on to highlighting as to why I feel, with my experience with Unilever, that finance people are the real value creators, and how can they be the value creators. So I'll start off with my first slide, which says talent is the only competitive and sustainable advantage in a global knowledge economy. And I'm sure this has been talked about again and again in every conference, in every workshop. And that's a fact. Any business plan, any technology, if you've got money in your pocket, you can move on and buy technology off the shelf. If I have money in my pocket, I can hire some good consultants and they can give me a brilliant business plan. But that technology and that business plan has to be brought to life. Who's going to bring that to life? It's people. It's talent. None but a talent. So that technology or that business plan, technology is a piece of metal or a plastic, and a business plan is none but a piece of paper unless these two are brought to life. And bringing to life is only and only people. So organization challenges to acquire and then to transform people into a talent. So that's what actually I strongly believe in, and that's what, if you look at every successful organization in the world, that's what actually they have been able to do. Now, moving on, how does talent strategy and practices and systems work? It has to be linked with the business strategy. Everything is driven from the strategy. So talent strategy and talent practices of any company a successful company, I would say, has to be linked with a business strategy. So they has to be in sync. They has to be dovetailed. If it's not, then the HR function, the human resource people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So my next slide talks about there has to be integrated talent management and practices. It has to be linked with the business. And I'm sure all of you sitting here who have an experiences in the businesses, and if you're running the businesses, I'm sure you know it well, you experience it well, that an HR or talent management strategy, if it isn't dovetailed with the business strategy, it means nothing. There, there's no need to have an HR function or a talent management function in a business if it is not dovetailed it's not in sync, it's not aligned with the business strategy, because at the end of the day, it has to deliver business agenda. So the experience says, within the country and outside, though within Unilever, but studying different organizations also, that 